Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So in the last video, we took a look at vulnerable code on the BEC token. We took a look at an overflow in a function that allowed us to bypass checks and send out values without decreasing our balance. Now we're gonna take a look at the actual attack against BEC token on chain on etherscan.io and see how the transaction actually looks before we actually execute it ourselves locally. So, if you have not watched the previous video and you have not read the blog, none of this is gonna make sense, so please go do that first. On the blog, you're gonna see a link to the transaction I have open right now. So once that opens up in your browser, scroll down until we see click here to see more, and scroll down a little more and we'll see our input data. In our input data, we can see this is our batch transfer function that is being sent and our receivers and our value. Now, the format of this is an eight byte value of a method ID, which is a partial of a SHA-3 hash. We're gonna show how to calculate that in a minute. Then we have five 32 byte values, which incorporates the data that we're sending. So let's first take a look at this method ID and what it actually is. In order to do that, you're gonna to need to open up your console and use node to calculate it. So let's do that now. So let's open up our terminal and make sure you have Node installed. If you do not, you can do it with an apt-get. And we're gonna install Web3, so npm install Web3. I already have this installed, so I'm just gonna type in Node to get to a Node terminal. Once I'm in my Node terminal, I'm going to import the Web3 library and set it to Web3 so we can access the functions it has. And then I'm going to run the following. Now all this is doing is it's using the SHA-3 library and it's hashing our function name along with our variables and taking a substring of that. And then we return back the value 0x83f12fec. If we compare that to the actual function in the input data, that matches. So all this is is a substring of a SHA-3 hash of the function. The rest of these values might look a bit cryptic, but they're actually easy to understand. So if you remember, we're sending in an array of receivers and we're sending in a value. Now the first slot here marked zero says 40 and that's a hex value. 40 hex is actually 64 bytes. If you divide that by two, it's 32 bytes. Now remember I said these are 32 byte values. So if we go 32, 32, we're gonna actually hit the first value in the array, which is the first address in the receivers, and then this is the second address in the receivers. So all this 40 is, is an offset to the array. Now, the second value here in the one slot is actually the value that we're sending, which is a very large value. You'll see eight with a whole bunch of zeros. So this is your underscore value. Now, when we times that by two, we create our overflow. The third slot here in the number two is the number of values in our array, which is two. So we have one, two. So all this is is an offset to our array that has two values with the value that we're actually sending to people of this very, very large number. It's pretty simple to understand, but I wanted to show this and how it actually looks in the transaction so you can kind of reverse engineer the format when you're looking at transactions on the blockchain. Hopefully you learned something from this video. I don't often see this type of information shared, so I figured I would add it to part of the attack. That way you understand everything that's going on. So if you learned something here, please hit the like button. And if you wanna help me out and you know somebody who might benefit from this video, share it out to them or post it on your social media. And I'll check you in the next video where we're going to dive in and actually exploit this locally and see how it's really done. Thank you, and I'll catch you soon.